When explorers look for hydrocarbons deep below the Earth's surface, they have to keep in mind that there are three types or three phases of fluid that they're going to encounter. The first phase is commonly, well, the first phase is air. This thing is filled with air and there are gases like air, uh, methane, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, all of those gases exist deep underground. In addition to those gases, an explorer has to think about the fact that he's going to encounter or she is going to encounter water beneath the ground. Here we've got our motor oil and all oils, whether they're kitchen oils or whether they're hydrocarbons, are immiscible or soluble within other organic compounds. For example, let's say I have an organic oil from the kitchen and an organic oil from underground. Because they're organic, they will mix together. But they're not soluble with water. And so we have a separation deep underground of oil and water. So what I'll do here is pour some refined crude oil from deep underground. And what you see, there's a few bubbles in there, but what you see is typical of what happens deep underground in an oil reservoir. And when an oil reservoir has a large open void, well, has a lot of porosity, and the, 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 the two types of fluid can move past each other, the water will tend to move to the bottom. The oil will float on top. This is because oil has a, a lower density than water, and things with less density are lighter, and they float to the top. And because the two cannot mix, the two phases are separate. So this is a typical oil and gas reservoir, where we have water, we have oil, and in the top we have gas. So as we go and we buy our drilling rig and we drill our or well down through the ground and we enter the oil reservoir, first thing that the pipe encounters may be gas that is trapped up at the top of the reservoir beneath some impermeable rock above. As we drill down through, then we drill into a contact between the gas and the oil and into the oil part of the reservoir. Now this is the oil that then would be produced up the pipe and back to the rig above. If we were to keep on drilling and had a thick enough rock, we would get into what we call the water leg of the reservoir, where the water is down at the bottom. And if we started producing from this pipe here, we would be producing water, not oil or gas. One of the roles of an exploration geologist is to tell the drillers where to drill and how deep. Oil and gas is found deep within the earth in rock. Rock holds the oil and gas in tiny little gaps and spaces that are formed when the rock forms or that form when the rock is buried deep within the earth. Those spaces are what we call porosity. And the porosity of the rock is just the ability of a rock to store liquids like water, oil, and gas. It's the spaces in between the grains. So here I've got some, some peanuts and you can see the peanuts are, are, are in sort of a typical jar. But you can see that between the peanuts there are a lot of little gaps. And in this case, air fills those spaces. This is pretty typical of a very nice oil and gas reservoir deep within the earth because there's a lot of storage space that we can put fluids in. Sunflower seeds also have tiny spaces in between them. Now the seeds are smaller and there are more seeds. And so the tiny pore spaces between seeds are also smaller. But Volume by volume, both of these contain a lot of space between the grains. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our mixture of water, oil, and gas, and in this case the gas is already contained within the peanuts and the sunflower seeds and the gaps. We're going to take our solution and we're going to pour it into the two reservoirs, and this is going to simulate exactly to what an oil and gas reservoir does deep underground. So take the lid off both. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pour our mixture of hydrocarbons and water into our two reservoirs. And I don't recommend that you eat them afterwards. And be careful not to overfill because if you do you'll be cleaning up a mess. Which I demonstrate by making a mess. 
Okay. Now if we look closely at what's happening, you'll see bubbles. And the bubbles that are coming up through these two reservoirs are the air, which was originally occupying the spaces in between the grains. And that air is now being displaced up to the top by these two fluids, which are more dense, which are working their way down through the peanuts. And I poured the solution of water and oil into the peanuts. And right now, the water and oil are not, they, they are mixed throughout. And they are not segregated yet. But if we wait long enough, what we will see is that the water will make its way to the bottom of the reservoir and it will do so faster in the peanuts than it does in the sunflowers because the spaces between the grains are actually connected. And the larger the spaces, the larger the connectivity between them. And that means that the fluids can move past each other more quickly. And we think about these things because as we drill our well down into, the, into these different types of reservoirs, we have to know where the water is and where the oil is so that we can produce the proper fluid from the reservoir.